We have just learned about the physicochemical properties of uranium, and we'll see how it is processed, starting from the mining to its fabrication to a fuel pellet that will be used in a nuclear reactor. The front end of the nuclear fuel cycle is the collective term for all the processes that are indicated in yellow in this slide. Uranium is a rarer element in the Earth. It is concentrated in the continental crust of the Earth at an average concentration of about one part per million, which is a 500 times higher than, for example, gold. This concentration is too low for mining, and only deposits in which the uranium is further concentrated are of interest. There is a wide range of concentrations in the uranium ores, going from about 500 ppm to a few tenths of percent, as well as the deposit size. Whether it is interesting to anvil and mine the ores depends on the costs or the other mining products, environmental conditions, among others. In the graph, you can see two extremes, the Olympic Dam mine in Australia with a low uranium concentration and Cigar Lake in Canada, a very high concentrated ore, both representing enormous quantities. Chemistry plays an important role in the concentration of uranium in the ores. We have learned in the previous lecture that uranium can be dissolved easily in the waters in contact with the atmosphere, and dissolution precipitation processes are therefore one of the main ore concentration mechanisms. For example, the figure shows how atmospheric waters enter a sandstone formation where it dissolves the uranium. When this solution comes in contact with an environment with a different EH, for example, because that environment contains divalent iron such as iron sulfide, the uranium can be reduced back and tetravalent uranium precipitates in concentrated form. The mining technique can thus be very different. Classical underground mining is one expensive and is only interesting for high-grade ores. Cigar Lake is one of the most striking examples. Open pit mining is less costly and can thus be used for lower grade ores. An increasingly popular method is in situ leaching, in which an oxidizing solution can bring poorly soluble uranium into solution, as we learned in the previous video, is pumped into and circulated through the ore body to dissolve the uranium. The Olympic Dam mine is the most well known example of this. In case of mining, the uranium must be extracted from the ore. This is done by crushing the mine rock and mixing with an acid solution to leach the uranium. However, not only uranium, but also other soluble elements are leached into the solution. In the next step, the uranium is therefore selectively extracted from the solution, either by ion exchange or solvent extraction. It is then precipitated by adding ammonium hydroxide to the solution, forming ammonium deuranate, which is then dried to give yellow cake, a product mainly made of u 3 rate. As you have learned in a previous presentation, the uranium-235 concentration in natural uranium is too low for use in a light water reactor and must be increased between 4 to 5 percent for a few cycle lengths of four years. This is nowadays mainly done by use of ultra-centrifuges, that make use of the difference of the centrifugal forces on gaseous molecules of different mass. In this process, uranium hexafluoride is used. Therefore, the next step in the fuel cycle is the conversion of the yellow cake to UF6. This is possible because UF6 is a gas near room temperature. It contains only one uranium atom, and fluorine has only one isotope, thus not changing the mass difference of three. UF6 is produced by dissolving the yellow cake to refine it from decay products to yield UO3, which is reduced to UO2 with hydrogen. This UO2 is then reacted with gaseous hydrogen fluoride to form UF4, which is subsequently reacted with fluorine gas to yield UF6, which is stored as a slightly pressurized liquid in special tanks that can be transported to the enrichment plants. In the centrifuge, Centrifugal forces push the heavier uranium-238 fluoride closer to the wall of the rotor than the lighter uranium-235 fluoride. The gas closer to the wall becomes depleted in uranium-235, whereas the gas nearer the rotor axis is slightly enriched in uranium-235. The efficiency is of one centrifuge is very small, and therefore many are combined in one stage, and the stages are placed in cascades 
in which the yield is optimized. The UF6 must now be converted back to UO2. This is done by reacting the UF6 with gaseous water and ammonia to form ammonium deuranate. This is then dried and reduced in hydrogen to UO2. The product is then milled to get a uniform powder quality. UO2 pellets are fabricated from the powder by compacting it in a biaxial press to a pellet that has a density of about 50% of the theoretical one. This density is not sufficient, and by sintering at 1600 degrees Celsius, this density can be increased to close to 95%. The pellets have a special shape with a dish and a chamfer, and in the next video we will learn what their function is and why the density is so important.